said before and we adore him. We have some announcements coming up. Uh, who's doing announcements? Here he is, here he is, here he is. Hey, don't worry. We haven't had a church split or nothing. A whole bunch of them were over at the Life I've Nev. Right now we're doing the Christmas play over there. So we got about 40 actors over there and, and a whole bunch of people miss a play like yesterday went over there. So... The play's going on right now. I just ran from over there. So good to see everybody. Welcome. Good good, and happy Christmas morning. What am I supposed to say? Merry Christmas. That's what I'm supposed to say. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. They'll be, still be coming in. I hope, at least. Rachel, is that you? Yeah. In from Arizona. Nate went to Arizona. I know. And you came here. Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you. How about shutting those doors for me so it's not so loud, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Hey, tonight's a communion service at 7 o'clock, okay? There's that little baby. There's that little baby. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Ariel. Ar Aria. 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 Little baby. Are we going to do that today? We're dedicating a baby today. Okay. So, what? Bells are coming? Come on. Come on. Communion tonight at 7. Work day at LifeNet Church tomorrow. If you'd like to work on a project, you're off from work and want to... Get with a bunch of guys and work. Life Net Church tomorrow, we're going to be building some walls, okay? If you want to help us with that, that'd be real good. Other than that, I just want you to have a very merry, 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 merry Christmas, okay? Would that be good? I think we're supposed to take an offering up too, but I don't see. We got an offering people in the lower level? There they are. You shine your plate there. Shine your plate at me. If There they are. Let's pray together. Father, we bless you this morning. Thank you for the bell choir that's behind me for this Merry Christmas season. Thank you for everything that's moving and shaking. Bless the play at the other building today and bless our time here today. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's gathered. I pray for those that are sick, those that have needs. Lord, those that are just heavy, weary. God, I pray you're lighting their load today. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I pray your presence come down in this place. I pray, God, we lift up a worship to you that we be pleasing to you. This offering, we give it to you for your kingdom, for your work. Let it be done, Lord, through the giving of our church. We bless each one that's here today. Let them, Lord, feel your presence and know you in a powerful way, we, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Another round of applause. Isn't that good? There's nothing like young people at Christmas and children at Christmas. And my grandson is uh, almost four this year, and he is so excited. And he's uh, when someone's bad, he thinks they're on the naughty list. And uh, so he, and he says, uh, I'm on the nice list. I'm on the nice list. And so my son is using it to its full advantage. You better do this or you're going to be on the naughty list. It works. You do anything you can. So, uh, and you know what? I'm, I'm thankful for grace. Uh, you know that God uh, doesn't always look at our actions; He looks at our heart. And uh, if the blood is covering it, then we're we're covered by His grace. I love the thought of grace and the and the thing that uh, He came to give us because we couldn't do it on our own. It wasn't like a naughty list or a nice list. He knew that we couldn't make it. But uh, he came so that we could uh, have life and have it more abundantly. And it says, full of grace. He was full of grace and truth. And uh, we need that, don't we? We need that. Lord, thank you for covering us with your grace. We worship you. Let's give the Lord uh, a, just a gift of worship today.
cries out, we need a Savior. And I want you to just imagine, just imagine what our life would be like without Christ. And you may, some of you in here may think, oh, I don't know if it'd be any different. But I, I guarantee you it would. Because anything good, anything righteous, anything with any hope is in Christ and in Christ alone. And I'll tell you what, we are all desperate people and we all need a Savior. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That love overflowed because he's seen us. He didn't have to, but he loved us so much. So this morning, I pray that we're thankful. I pray we're grateful. I pray we just can get a little bit of understanding of how valuable the gift of Christ's coming is to us. He came and made a way for us. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. To anyone else, can you cry that out this morning? Every breath, I need you. Lord, thank you. And this morning, I don't know where you're at. There may be some of you that just came to church just because your mom and dad or your wife or whoever made you feel guilty. But let me tell you, I want to tell you that the Lord is good. Without Him, there's no hope. You need Him. The best thing I ever did was accept Him. You are my source of life.
by grace you even know what grace is grace is not getting what I need, deserve you know and uh, it's a gift it's just the love of Christ being poured out on us you don't have to earn it how much he loves you Lord I pray you capture us with that Lord I want to know you I want to yield myself to you at the cross. Lord, that's the complete story, God, that you came, Lord, and you lived and you died, you rose again, and you're coming back, God. All for a reason. Lord, I want to know you. I want to find out who you are. More and more and more. Remember, redemption death, where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as gold. Lead me to the cross where your love poured.
Lord, there's nothing, no gift I would never exchange, and it's you. I don't want to take you back. Lord, I don't want to exchange you for anything else. The dearest, most precious gift I've ever received is you, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, I cherish you. I love you. I take you out. And Lord, I let you be glorified. Lord, and people see your love. Thank you, God. And be with the word of God today. In Jesus' name. the reason that the king of glory became a human born in a manger and I'm so grateful that he didn't stay in the manger that he went to the cross and that's what it's all about we are the reason that he came <laughs> dream of Christmas morn all the gifts and toys we knew we'd find but we never realized a baby born one blessed night gave us the greatest gift of our lives we All right. That's really good. Thanks for coming this morning. We're going to do this baby dedication right now. Is that okay with everybody? I hope so. We love babies around here. Christmas time, baby dedication. How do you get better than that? 
It's like a live illustration of the whole thing. Yeah, come on. And I'll take anybody who wants to come. Family, grandparents, anybody that wants to come. Little tiny, teeny, tiny baby, baby. Miracle baby. Okay? Y'all coming? Grandma coming? Sweetie, grab that rail right there. I don't want to lose you, okay? Charlie, be careful. There's some steps there that are shaped a little weird. Come on up here. Yeah, come on now. Come on. Yeah, that's okay. Just to tell you again, if you just came in late, we've got about 60, 70 people at the other church this morning doing a Christmas play. So you're going, where is everybody? We have blessed that other church. They are so excited. They're sitting on the counters. It's really exciting over there. So we gave them a present this morning in a play, okay? But this is family here. Ford family. Uh, I don't know. Steve started coming first. Is that right? Steve and the boys. Yeah, I know. Well, oh, no, you're right. But Steve, back here, Steve, well, let me say it this way. When we first bought this whole building, we were in trouble just trying to work on it. We didn't have enough help. And when Steve and Caleb and his brother Amos came, that like doubled our work crew here. I, I, you, you, you can't, these two men right here, and I'm just not trying, but when I get them up here on the stage, I want to talk about them. These two guys, when they came, I could have kissed them on the lips. Yeah, yeah. So we were so excited when they came along to help us, and, and uh, just the whole thing, the family's been close, and Joe, and then Joy, and Bruce, and everybody came, and then these two strangers here come in here. It's been a while. But uh, Charity... You know, they met here in church. I don't know if you know this. The Blevins family came to church here, and then the Ford family came to church here, and then they started hanging out together, okay? Well, they've been married how many years? Thirteen. Thirteen years. Wanted to have kids. Couldn't have kids. Couldn't have kids. In fact, I think everybody gave up except for this lady right here. And she kept saying, you're going to have a kid. You're going to have a kid. You had a dream or something, didn't no, you? I didn't have a dream about charity. I, I um, Six years ago... Um, my husband Steve and I have been married. Um, can you five, hear her? Can you hear her okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Been, my husband Steve and I have been married for five years. Caleb is my not my natural son. He's a fruit of my heart. Yeah. Um, and I love him. <laughs> but um, six years ago, um, the chair dad had been friends, and we were neighbors, and I just didn't understand why the Lord hadn't given them children, even though she was at peace with it. Mm -hmm. And I started praying for them before my husband and I got married. Started praying for them to have children, unceasing, because I would see her with... Um, there was a two ones here, this little one went here yet. And yeah. um, I would see her, she was like a, you know, a little mother hen with her nieces, and Caleb was, was so wonderful. And um, so anyway, uh, I was praying, just prayed unceasing. When Steve and I got married, I prayed daily for Charity oh. and Caleb to have a baby. Last January, my sister and I were out here some thrifting, and I found a crib, a baby crib at a thrift store, and it was really pretty, it was $5, and I bought it, and my sister said, what are you buying that for? Because we have Amos and Aiden who are married, and Anna and Donald. And she said, are they expecting? I said, no. I said, um, she said, this isn't for Charity and Caleb, is it? They can't have children. I said, yeah, it's for their baby. She's going to get oh, the baby. I didn't know it was where a girl was going to sleep in it in our house. And so I bought the crib, put it up in the attic, and um, so I kept claiming that baby. And when I found out a couple months ago my granddaughter was on the way, I wasn't surprised, but I knew it was crazy. You were the only one. Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So she was the only one who wasn't surprised not too long ago. We got the news that we're pregnant, right? We are. I shouldn't say we are, but we're all, we're pregnant. So everybody in this whole is like, ah! Okay, so it's amazing. I'm going to wake up the baby if I keep doing that, right? No, she's so, for most of worship. Okay. So 13 years married, not children, didn't think we we're going to have children. Deb just stayed after it, bought a baby crib last year, and uh, we got us a baby. Listen to me. God is amazing. Amen. We used to have a, a, a banner that hung up there, and it says, with God, all things are possible. With this whole, in fact, in this whole Christmas story, the angel speaks to Mary, and, and the angel says, with God, everything's possible. You hear me? You all believe God's, you believe that? If you don't believe it, okay. So we pray for these babies that God would just be with them their whole, their whole life, right? 
We believe in dedicating babies to the Lord that this little gal would, would serve him with her whole heart, her whole, that she wouldn't get off God's path, that everything that is for her is on her path, God's perfect will for her, that she wouldn't stray from that. You understand? Get all that? Because how many of you all here can say, as soon as I strayed from God's path, I got in a lot of trouble, right? That she would never leave God's path for her life, and God use her all the days of her life. That's how I like to pray. Because we just don't know what that gal, who that gal, what that gal, how that gal may change the world, right? Right. Especially with this family around her. We've got three, four generations on both sides standing there. Four generations on both sides here. All serving the Lord. It's pretty amazing. That's okay. That's okay. I'll go faster. <laughs> now tell me again. Aria. Ah, uh, like watching fireworks. Ah, uh, Aria. Aria. Okay, would you all pray with me together? We dedicate this baby to the Lord. Lord, we pray for little Aria. And we ask you, Lord, to be with her. God, she's a miracle. And I pray, Lord, she never ceases to be that. That we look at her as she grows and realizes she's a gift from God. And Lord, that she would always prick our hearts, Lord, to believe again. So use this little girl to remind us, Lord, that you do the impossible. You do the great stuff. Mm -hmm. I pray for her, Lord, that you'd go with her from this baby's moment right here, all the days of her life. God, that you'd bless her. That everybody in this stage, Lord, would be part of the contribution of the God learning that she'll need so that she is full of you and the knowledge of you. And she would never fear the things that you put before her. And she would accomplish everything, Lord, yes. you, you've called her to do. So, Lord, I pray the devil fears her. And, God, that she's a mighty warrior for you. Amen. And I ask you, Lord, to lift her up to be in your perfect will and use her. I pray for Caleb, Lord, that he, he just have some wisdom in raising a daughter because he'll need it. And for charity, Lord, just, God, just turn on the mother gift in her, Lord, and let her just be the... Just everything that this gal needs. Let her be raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Let her know you. Let her sing. And honor her, honor you with her whole life. We thank you for her. We bless you because you do miracles. Go with her now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. Thank you. Aria. 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 Okay. Aria is an Italian song, so you pray for Oh, yeah? Wow, wow, wow. That stuff always moves me. I don't Maybe I'm going to be an old softy or something. I don't know. Sis, those, that family's here, so don't leave me, okay? We'll talk to them. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Thanks for being here, everybody. We're going to get down and, and go after it this morning on Christmas morning. I want to say to you just some things that I, if I could just pull up a stool here, just talk out of my heart for just a minute. Maybe I ought to bring my wife up here. I don't know. She's saying no. That means me, to me, that means yeah. You want to come up here, baby, or not? No? I just think there's mo just one of the moments where I just want to say thanks. God gave us a gift in Jesus, his son. And then God gives us other things. For me, the Lord gave me a wife that loves the Lord. We've never fought one time about God's stuff. And every other time we fought, she realized she was wrong at some point. <laughs> we never have. If there's teenagers in this place, if you pick out God's best for you, if you pick out who God has for you, he'll bless it. You hear that? And we had children, and oh my goodness, just all the ups and downs you have with children. But at one point, God called us to a church. And you never know how that's going to go. And, and, and then God surrounds you with beautiful people with talents and gifts. And... And they use them for the Lord, and they bless you, and you try to bless them. And, but I've been given more than I've given. Does that make sense? 
The Lord has given me more in you than I've been able to give to you. And I uh, thank you for that. That's all I can say. That's all I know to say. Okay? I just know the things that God does are, is beautiful. And when, when it isn't God, it's really ugly. Does that make sense? And I've learned to try to take that ugly stuff and throw it away and, and try to make the broken things, things I lay before the Lord, that he might make them beautiful. Does that make sense? Did everybody get that? So... God's kept his promise to me because he told me he'd bless me. And he told me that, that people would come and be a blessing to me. And the Lord told me that he was going to establish a church here. And he did. And I thank you for that. I thank you for being faithful. Your faithfulness is my reward. Does that make sense? Because there's nothing greater for a pastor. The, the way you say you love me is just to come. So you don't have to get me anything. I'm not looking for you, you know, I'm not looking for any of that. I'm not looking, looking for applause. I'm not if you just faithfully come, that's a present to me every week. And I thank you for that. In turn, I will try my best. Hey, to just give you what the Lord gives me. I don't know what else to do. That's just who I am. Try to teach you in the word of God and encourage you to serve him. Right? And that's what we ought to all be doing to each other. Gifts to one another. Does that make sense? You get that? Don't get mad at me. I want to be a gift to you. Okay? I'm not going to get mad at you because I consider you a gift to me. You catching all that? And God in the middle of it, it'll be beautiful. It just will. It just is. It just is. You got that? And if God, if it's not beautiful, then get on your knees. And I'm not trying to preach like a hard, but a hard preacher, but just get on your knees and ask the Lord to come in. The Lord gave me that wife back there, and when it wasn't so good, I'd get on my knees and say, "God, fix her." <laughs> and then he'd end up, then he'd end up working on me. Joy, give me some of them Kleenex. Right? I need them. Okay. You get all that? You get that? I'd prayed, I, you know how many times I prayed, God, you've got to fix that woman. And you know what happened? God started dealing with me. So I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I love you. I want to encourage you that we all get home. That's the goal of this pastor. I don't know if, I, I can't say about anybody, but my goal is we all get home together. My goal is that we all serve the Lord together till we get home and then, then we just re rejoice forever and ever together. Does that make sense? And enjoy the things that God's prepared for us. And the hardness of the journey, I'm hoping that that creates bonds. That makes sense? Not brokenness, but bonds. Hey, that make us strong. You get that? Catching everybody catching that? Bonds that make us stronger. Get going this morning. Father, would you bless the word today? It's Christmas time. And oh my, it all started, Lord, with you giving us a gift at Christmas. I pray your presence would come here and the word of God would be present and everything we say and do, God, would just encourage those, Lord, that are in you and, and Lord, that you speak to everybody in this place in a special way. God, again, I ask you to move here in the hearts and lives of people. And you'd empower a preacher to have words that move us from where we are to a place where you've called us to go. Do it today, I pray. Let this be a special time, this Christmas time, Lord. Let it be a special service today. Come and do great things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Colin, I think we'll start with that video. I got some video for you. I hope you enjoy today. It's some good stuff. And uh, Merry Christmas. I play Joseph in the live nativity, the stepfather to the Messiah. Some rather big shoes to fill, or sandals as it may be. As a method actor, um, I have to experience what the character experienced, you know, in order to play the role. It takes a lot of effort, so I do what I can to get my body in shape. Sometimes on my lunch break, I'll just go into Joseph's position.
So I'm thinking of renting a donkey. No. No, no, look, uh, we would just ride it, okay? No. No, no, look, just around town, okay? I just want to get a feel for what Joseph must have done. I'm not going to ride a donkey through town. Babe, look, Brando shadowed gangsters, okay? Winona stole a purse. Larry actually was a cable guy. I, I need this, okay? I need to know what it was like to serve the mother of God. You want to know what it was like to serve? Then serve me by setting the table. Throughout the years, I have adopted the lifestyle of many notable characters. I even uh, played Judas in our church's gospel musical rendition of Happy Feet. I actually wrote that one. Uh, it's called Happy Feet Washing. <laughs> Lord, why? Why would you put me through this? Do you understand, God? This is difficult. The people around town, they are talking. They're asking why I would marry a woman who's bearing another man's child. What did I do, do Lord? Mm, God love him. But he sounds like the guy from The Fiddler on the Roof. Why? She said that? I, I sound nothing like Tevia. I played Tevia in high school. I think I'd know the difference. She, she sounds like Fran Drescher. Not the voice, but the... He's starting to scare the children. Dad, I don't want to do this again. Uh... Oh, come on, buddy. Just from the top. The part about the end. No room. Go ahead. I'm sorry, sir, but there's no room in the end for you. What? You're telling me that my pregnant wife and me, you're going to leave us out in the streets? We may die out there. Is that what you want to happen? Is that... Uh, honey? He's fine. He's fine. Um, this is Travis, my son. He will be playing the role of Jesus. Even larger sandals to fill. F figuratively. He has very, very small feet. It is a live nativity, um, so we are on our feet for five hours each night, um, seven days leading up to Christmas. It's um, not so much of a physical challenge for me. I played sports in high school. Um, it's more of a, a spiritual challenge. Really? It just is. Where's my baby Jesus? Because daddy's ready for the show. What's wrong? I couldn't do it. What? What are you talking about? I couldn't give up my son. Honey, they're counting on you. No, um... If I were God... I couldn't give up my boy. The world would be out of luck. Wow. Isn't that something? That's something, isn't it? You didn't see that coming, did you? Let's look at the scripture here, okay? Galatians chapter 4. The Bible says, but, in the fullness, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Now, I just want to share with you two things about this story. This Christmas story, you know it. You know the account that's there in Luke chapter 2 and, and the details of it. But two amazing things about this story is, one, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? He did it. What that man on that video just said he couldn't do and what I probably couldn't do and what many of you couldn't do, couldn't do that with little old Aria, 
hey, the Lord decided he would do with his son. And I'm a big believer that from the beginning of time, God knew what the price would be and knew what the cost would be, and he knew that his son would have to experience. But he has also known with us that hardship, hey, brings us to something better. And that God's trying to work spiritual things in the middle of crazy things and he's trying to always implant something from him in the middle of broken things so that broken things can become things that are of him. You catching that whole thing? I've watched too many times broken marriages get God in the middle of them and they, they, they turn around and, and finances, when they, people get God in the middle of that, they turn that around and just lives get turned around because the Lord gets in. And the Lord knew that when he, when he said, I'll give my son, because without that, there'd never be the opportunity for something to be turned around. The, the, it, it would always be the same. The people would be this. There wouldn't be a hope. There wouldn't be a change. There wouldn't be a, a redeemer. But the second thing I want you to know, outside of the love of God and the decision he made to give up his son, the second thing I want you to know is the Lord understood the time. And it says right here, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. The Lord always understands the time. Can I, can I get you to understand that? That God always understands what time. Sometimes we think, well, God doesn't care about time or God doesn't care about the timing. But the truth of the matter is in the scripture all the way through, we see God work at perfect time all the time. God has a, like a watch that is just right, you know. He's got, it never gets behind it, it never gets ahead, doggone it, because sometimes I think he's way too slow. My biggest problem with God, I just want to tell you right now, my biggest problem with God is he takes too long. He doesn't move fast enough for me. I, Lord, I want it, I want it now. But I think the Lord has dealt with me over the years about that attitude, and it's been wrong, because God's timing is always the right timing. I can just give you a story or two. I, I got plenty of amazing stories about God's timing. One time, one time it was a bunch of years ago, seven, eight years ago, on a February morning, it was snowing like crazy. School was canceled that morning. And Jamie got up, and I could just always tell. My wife gets up, and I can always tell when the Lord's trying to do something with her, and she says, I've got to go to court that day. It wasn't she was in trouble with the court. It was the, the, there was a family going to court, and she thought the children might be taken away from mom and dad. And I looked at her and said, you're crazy. You don't need to get out in that snow. Stay here. School's canceled today. She was working as a school counselor that day. Stay home. Don't go out in that. For just a brief moment in our life, this sounds crazy, but she had a four-wheel drive pickup truck. That's what she had to drive. And she said, but I've got this four-wheel drive pickup truck. Now, we don't have it since, and we didn't have it before. We never had it. But in that moment of time, we got this four-wheel drive pickup truck. She said, I can make it, and I feel like i got to go. I feel like the worst. I'm saying, Jamie, don't go. They won't even have court today. It's crazy. Don't go. I'm trying to talk her out of something. Hey, by the way, when God's trying to do something, often there's people trying to talk you out of it. So she said, Mark, 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 I got to go. I just know I got to go. And no matter how much I said don't go, she said, I'm going. So she hopped in a pickup truck. I remember her going out that day. And I remember getting on a, a snow plow and just starting to plow the driveway. And, and, and that I'm, she tried to call me a couple of times, but I'm plowing. I don't even get her phone calls. And, and uh, well, in court that day, there was very few people there. And a social worker turns around and looks at the judge and says, that lady right there has been working with two of these boys. And the judge looks at her real quick and says, do you want these boys? Of course, her mouth jobs. She says, for how long? The judge says, for two weeks. She says, okay. So later, uh, I do get a call that says, hey, I'm bringing boys home for two weeks. And I'm okay with that. I'm more the merrier in my house. I'm okay with all that. Well, that two weeks turned into... Next time we went to court, two months. And the next time we went to court, it turned into six months. And the next time we went to court, it was two years. And the next time we went to court, I remember the day she asked the same question, how long? And the judge said, forever. Slapped her gavel. And I'm just reminded about God's perfect timing. She, she reminded me after all that, that, that the Lord spoke to her one time and said that she would have four children. 
And we had two, and those pregnancies were awful. I mean, were awful. She puked from day one to the last day. We had IVs in her arm at home. We had nurses come in and take care. We didn't want any more kids. After two kids, we thought the third one would kill her. So we said, no more kids. We got them tubes all burnt and tied and all knotted up. I shouldn't tell you all that, should we? Should I? I was there. I watched. We knotted those things so good. And deep in her heart, hey, deep in her heart, now listen to me. Deep in her heart, she knows God didn't lie to me. But on a particular morning in God's perfect timing, when God wanted to do something, he put something on her heart so heavy that her own husband couldn't talk her out of it, not going. And guess what happened? God kept his promise. And I don't know, in my silly story, it isn't nothing compared to this greatness of this story. This story took a place over thousands of years, over lots of different people, over prophets and kings and, and the genealogy and all the stuff that had to be lined up and all, you know. And, but, but, but God was going to keep his promise. Does everybody understand that? How amazing this story is. It didn't look like it could happen. The whole thing seemed impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Listen to me, church. We got to get back to the place where we look at the Christmas story and we say, God did something impossible. Before our very eyes today, we saw again a baby from the impossible. You getting all that? The Lord's trying to open our eyes that he isn't like the world, that he does great things. You catching all that? And he does things in his perfect timing. Yeah, we get discouraged often because God doesn't do it as fast as we want him to. But God will be faithful because that's what he is. That's who he is. Amen. All the days and all the things and all the disappointments and all the ups and all the downs. Listen, I've never known God to be unfaithful to me, ever. If I could tell you the things that even have happened this week, you would sit here. I, I could tell you a story that happened this week and you'd have tears running down your face because of God's faithfulness in our lives. So when the fullness of time had come, because God knew the time and God got it, man, he totally, completely got it. He was working for good the whole time, knew what the right time was, and brought a son into the middle of a mess because God does the impossible. God does the beautiful I'm so glad in, in modern Christian worship music, we're, we're starting to say words like that. The, the greatness and the beauty and the, 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 all those things that are truly exactly how we ought to be describing God. So, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth the son, born of a woman, under the law. So it's trying to tell us here, well, a woman had him and, and the law was a mess. Next. To redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Right? So, I'll tell you my quick little story. At 11 years old, one night after going to revival service, this is how it worked for me. There was a singing group at the church we went to. My parents had given their hearts to the Lord a couple weeks before. The Lord was dealing with my heart at 11 years old. Does God still do that? Of course he does. I stand on this stage. I know every Sunday we're here, God's dealing with people's hearts about things. I know it. I just know it. And a lady from that singing group walked off the stage, came back to me, and said, Young man, would you like to come pray? And I looked at her with the biggest lie I ever told and said, I'm okay with God. I'm good. She said, I feel like the Lord told me to come back here and ask you to come pray. I said, Nope, nope, I'm good. Well, that just made everything worse in my heart. I remember going home, my heart just beating, 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 beating. Got home in bed, couldn't sleep. That was just my story. Couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep. Everybody in the house was asleep. I said, Lord, I can't, I can't, I can't not do it. I, I got, Lord, I got to. And I rolled out of my bed, the side of my bed. said, Lord, I don't know what to pray. I just know I need you. I know I'm going to change my mom and dad in two weeks. I know there's something good about you. I know those people that are carrying you around have a smile on their face and a joy in their heart. And, and I need you. Forgive me of my sin. And that thing lifted off me. That's the only thing I can remember. That the, the confusion and the conviction and the heaviness lifted. I remember getting back in bed and just sleeping, 
tell my mom the next day I got out of bed and prayed and she was so excited. I heard later that angels rejoiced in heaven because I, and all the things. And, and, and I knew at that moment, listen, that I was adopted as a son. And I wasn't of this world anymore and, and I didn't have to think like this world anymore. I didn't have to be like that anymore because the, the God of heaven forgave me. He forgave me. 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 Rotten old Mark. As rotten and stinking and little young boy that possibly could be. I don't know if you understand, but I was all boy growing up. You know me very long. I'm a stinker still. You get me? I mean, we do all kinds of fun little things, but, but we blow up anything. We were just in boys. Hey. But the Lord gave me a gift in his son. And the reason why he gave me a gift in his son was because he wanted me to be his son too. Does that make sense? And the Lord wants you to be his son or daughter too. That's what Jesus come on earth wasn't just about God making some big announcement that he could put a, a human suit on, on the son of God. It was about him redeeming us so we could be sons and daughters of God. That we might be adopted as sons. You've heard my story about Connor and Cole when they came to our house. Listen, everything changed for them. You know that, right? Tim and Bev brought us over a bunch of their kids' clothes from next door. So they got all of a sudden got American Eagle, got all the rich kid clothes. That's a joke, by the way. I'm trying to cut. It's a joke. Come on, laugh, laugh. Oh, thank you, thank you. Somebody's crying. What happened there? And my kids, listen. My kids got socks and underwear and every crack cleaned and everything. It was different. They got beds and bedrooms and... When they became sons, hey, they also received the Father and the good things of the Father. They started receiving instruction from a father. You understand that? I don't know if you all get that, but one of the greatest things a dad can be is instructional and disciplinary. You know what I mean? So they start receiving that. Now, that wasn't something they liked to swallow, but it's something they needed very much. You get that whole thing? Because God wanted not only for their outside to turn around, and, and their, he wanted their thinking to turn around, their lifestyle, their patterns of their life to get turned around. You get that whole thing? So when I, when I adopted them as sons, I, I adopted them saying, we're going to not just change out. We're going to change it all. These boys are going to have my fingerprints on them. Right? Now they came, listen to me, they came having lived another way for a lot of years. That makes sense? So, guess what? There was stuff in them I didn't put in them. You getting all that? But immediately, we went, to, we went to this. We went to encouraging the good, hey, and discouraging the bad. In love, you catching all that? So they might be really be known as our sons. Right? So in the gift of Jesus, hey, was given so we might have the same honor as Jesus. We might be called the son of God, sons and daughters of God. You catching all that? See, I, I, I don't know how to get all this in you, but, but the understanding that needs to happen here at Christmas time is God did what he did so you can be what he was, is, still is, will be. And then you'll receive a crown and you'll get to go where he lives and you'll be in heaven and, and all those things that, that were promised of, of my new adopted father, of my father in heaven. I'll receive my, my earthly father died a bunch of years ago. I understand, listen, because of that, I have a, this great understanding of what a father is and what it is to have one and what it is to not have one. And I'm so glad that I'm considered a son, and I'm so glad that God assumed the role of a father because there's nothing a young man needs anymore than a father. Right? Next verse here, Colin. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son 
into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Now, when I read that verse, I, I still get twisted around. Is that the spirit within me crying, or is it the change that has happened in me? I think that's what's happening here. That I would cry out to the Lord and call him Father. That the Spirit of God would cause me to realize I, I need a Father. Next. Therefore, you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. You get all that, don't you? Listen, this thing that we're in because of Je baby Jesus, because of, you know, that whole Bethlehem story, that whole star in the sky, that whole wise men came and the shepherds came, that whole greatest story ever told, that whole thing changed everything for us here. Right? Let me do it the way I did in the first service. The greatest gift that was ever given, the present that was given to me, I grabbed a hold of it at 11 years old. Does that make sense? Yeah? The greatest gift, I grabbed a hold of it, and when I finally opened that thing up and began to realize what that thing was, I realized that thing would live inside of me. That gift from God would live inside. You catching what I'm saying? You, you, I, there's no other gift like that, that I can unwrap something, that I can figure out, that I can ask something to come, and I can receive something from the Father, and when that thing finally is unfolded for me, it begins to live in me. Catching that? Yeah? Yeah? And that, that, that changed me forever. I'm no longer the same. It isn't like the bicycle I got. When I was 12 years old, we, let me say it this way. When we got toys as kids, it didn't matter what the weather was outside. We'd get bicycles, and it could have been snowed a foot outside. You know what we were doing? What? Yeah, absolutely. We were out there riding, trying to ride in the middle. Of, you know how it is. You guys all. We were out there riding. If we got footballs, we'd suit up right after we opened it, and we'd go out there and start throwing a football. Right? We start throwing it in the house and then we get th mom throw us out. The instant I was given a Christmas present at Christmas time, guess what happened for me? I started using it. It became mine. I, I wanted to play with it. I wanted to go with it. I wanted to show it off. I'd even get clothes and my mom had to make me wear them right away. In fact, I got a shirt this morning. This is supposed to be a Christmas shirt and tie. And guess what? Jamie had it laying out already for me. So I don't get a gift and put it up on a shelf. I get a gift and instantly make it part of my life. Is that right? But this gift in Jesus, hey, when I finally got a hold, when I wrapped, unwrapped that thing, guess what? That thing began to live inside of me. And I could no longer be the same because the gift from God now lived within me. You guys aren't awake, are you? That's pretty good preaching right there. John, how'd the play go? You get to the end of it? Okay. Live it in me. That's what it's saying here. And I'm no longer a slave. I don't know if you get that or not. But my status before I opened that gift, before I let that, my status, even though I didn't fully understand it, my status was a slave. It was bondage. It was going to be misery and torment. And, but I went from being a slave to being a son. Yeah? Okay, I'll try some other verses if you... Let me tell the Christmas story a different way. Put some video, more video on you. Found some good video. Let's tell this Christmas story. Go ahead, Colin. Do you have any rooms? He said, 
No, I don't, but you can sleep in the, um, you can sleep in the barn. She was like, I'm not staying in there. Is that the only place we can go? Stinky. They said, okay, and then the ba baby Jesus was born. The shepherds were out in the field. They didn't care of cheats. And it was Davis and his brother, and his dad, Jeffrey. No, wait, not Davis, Daniel. And the angel showed, showed up and said um, that um, God's being born. And then they said, follow the star, follow the brightest star. You'll see the ba you'll see baby Jesus. What else? Wise men were um, three kings from the east. And they saw this bright light and it was when Jesus was born. They brought gifts to her. Metal presents, gold, something and something. Gold, um, and... Frankenstein and... Bow? He looked like metal. It's about Jesus. He wanted to love people, and he wanted them to be happy. First he was a little baby and then his dog grew up to be a man and then he was Jesus. He uh, made us and he loves us. He's God and that's why we celebrate Christmas. Christmas is Santa's birthday. <laughs> If you didn't know the story yet, there it was, right there. That straightened it out for you? Just real quickly, let's look at Mary. There's one more thing I want you to see here about Mary before I let you go. In Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 30, some verses there. I just want you to see something. I want to try to speak one more point to you today. The Bible says, uh, speaking to Mary, and an angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. Now, as soon as Jesus is on the scene here, as soon as we start talking about Jesus, the word favor starts being in play. And with Mary, a very special young lady who probably got there through a lot of difficult things in her life, I, I want you to know, everybody in this place, listen, Mary was not a rich kid. Mary probably was in the position for God to use her because she had been so broken in her life over so many hard things. We, listen, I just tell you, we don't see anything about her parents. We, we don't see any, it, it's probably very, she's probably crying out to God, and that's why God found favor with her. And the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. I just want you to know, as we kind of jump back here, when you, when you push into God, you find favor with him. I mean, we just talked about you become a son or daughter of God. And what favor means is God begins to do amazing things in your life. You catching that? As Christians, I, I just want you to know, we, 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 we read the Christmas story and we, we kind of think the Christian ease about that, but we don't realize God's trying to work those, still those crazy things in our world and in our lives also. I don't see a difference really and how God's working then as, than how God is working now. We just saw an amazing miracle baby. You catching that whole thing? What better timing could there be than on Christmas Sunday morning we have a miracle baby with us? They found favor with God. It took 13 years. <laughs> but the minute the Lord comes in, hey, the minute we cry out to the Lord, we become a son or daughter, and, and we're not stepchildren anymore. We're not adopted children. We find favor with him, and God just begins to love us. Now, along with just loving us and speaking to us, God begins to show us order in our life. And sometimes that order or the, the, the plan for our life isn't anything like what we thought it was going to be because we might have grown up and went to college and done all these things and had our own plan for our life. But we, we hope that that lined up with God's plan. But whether it does or it doesn't, we want to obey God and follow his plan, right? Because God's plans for us are always better than our plans for us. 
So Mary, you found favor with God. If I could speak to you all here, listen, as you ask the Lord to be your Savior, you found favor with God. God genuinely loves you. He just, just didn't make you a son. He's going to bring you to his house someday. Right? You know, the one Bible verse says, for in, your, in my father's house are many mansions. One translation that's different, you know, that the word, they say, in my father's house are many rooms. That the Lord is going to, heaven is going to be more like rooms than it is going to be mansions. That makes sense? So honestly, the Lord's going to bring us, because we're his kids, he's going to bring us to his house. Right. That makes sense? I want you to think, just, just thinking about them being kids and having a favor with God, that God's eternal thing with you is going to be, you'll be in his house. You call it heaven if you want to, but we're really going to the Lord's house. Because we're his kids, and we'll be able to go in and out without knocking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Unless, like my mom did, unless we had dirty shoes and she locked the door. But that's the awesome thing about being with God and having favor with God. We can come in and go out, hey, anytime we want. Just going quickly here, try to finish. I found favor with God. Next one. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call, you shall call his name Jesus. Next. And he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yay. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. <laughs> what that was saying was, and the Lord's going to be faithful to every promise he made through all those prophets, through all that Old Testament. He's going to be faithful to every bit of that. You're going to have a son, and, 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 and he's going to fill everything that I faith, the faithful God said he was going to do. Next one. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Next. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? I think that's a reasonable question. Next one. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and, you have, and the power of the highest will overshadow you, and therefore also the Holy One who is to be born shall be called the Son of God. Is there another one, Colin? No? Give me that last one, because I love this verse. Jump down about a chapter here. Luke, it's in Luke 2 right there. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them and pondered these things in her heart. Now let me, let me just talk about this and I'll quit. Why did Mary consider all these things in her heart? Because she had nobody to tell them to. Nobody would believe her story. She had a, 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 a friend, Elizabeth, a cousin, Elizabeth, and she ran there, but she had no body. She didn't have, so she kept all these things in. And I just want to say this to you, because Maggie and I got in this conversation. God designed your life like no other. And God will speak into your life, hey, where nobody else is going to understand. God was speaking to Jamie said, go to court, go to court, go to court. And her own husband, who ought to be close enough to hear, was saying, don't go to court. She said, I got to go to court, I got to go to court. Why? Because the Lord was speaking something in her. She had pondered things in her heart. She had already considered, how am I going to have four kids if I can't have kids? Ponder things, and God will put things in all of you. The Lord's dealing with all of us about the things he wants us to do, but we can't always tell everybody those things because it don't make sense to anybody else. Nobody understands what God's speaking of. Nobody knows what God's... The Lord has spoken things to me about this church before it was ever here. The Lord spoke things about my life before I ever knew those things. My family, my wife, that God was going to do these things. Listen, but I couldn't ever say any of that. Joseph, the dreamer, in the Old Testament, would talk about his dreams, and guess what that did for him? It only got him in a bunch of trouble. So Mary understood, I can only ponder these things in my heart because the Lord's call for me is different than everybody else's. And the more I try to talk to people about what God's doing, they just don't understand. Hey. God's speaking to every one of us here. And there's stuff he's placed in every one of our hearts. You got that? You getting that whole thing? Amazing things. Things beyond what people could ever, hey, believe. 
believe. And don't stop, don't stop believing. Hold on to that feet. Where'd that come from? For you younger people, that's an old, who sang that? Journey, old journey song. So don't stop believing. Hey, hey, and all those things God's put in your heart, hey, listen to me. Don't throw them away. Mary kid, all those things in her heart. And the Lord was faithful. He'll be faithful to you. Lord, thanks for time together today for this great church. Lord, I felt like I got to speak to them some things I wanted to say. And I thank you for them. Presents given from you, Lord. And I'm so grateful for each one of them. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, it was a gift for me that doesn't live on a shelf but lives in my heart. And I pray, God, that I display that gift given with my life to the world and the Lord the things that you put in my heart I pray I don't stop ever believing that I never quit on the things you're speaking and in your timing and in your love they'll be accomplished because you're faithful thank you for this amazing miracle story that reminds us again <laughs> who we are in you Thanks for time together this morning, Lord. Bless this church, their time with friends and family. God, just honor that. Bless it. Give them favor, I pray. Thank you, Lord, that you've called me to be a son. Thank you, Lord, that I get to enjoy the celebration of yours. God, just move mighty among us. Use us as lights in a dark world. We end, Lord, by saying thanks. Thank you for your gift given. We receive it with joy. And we go out, God. We go out with joy. Thanks, Lord, for the time together, for each one that's here. God, just grab a hold. Let us grab a hold of your word and live in it. We'll forever give you thanks and praise. We honor you with our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody.